Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Hello, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, that's literally what I think I sound like. Anyway, I thought it was about time I got on with the VU meter circuit, and this is the circuit that I've come up with. So this is my level meter circuit. It takes the left and right input and spits it out onto a single meter. There is a reason for that. You see, when I'm making my music and doing the mixing, if I have something panned all the way over to the left or all the way over to the right, the overall output of that instrument or whatever is going to be about 6 dB less than what it would be if it was coming out of both speakers. So. This way, just having just the one meter measuring both channels combined, I've got a more accurate readout. So how this works is, I've got two op amps here. This one buffers the left signal and this one buffers the right signal. They both get mixed by these two resistors here. And that goes into this op amp here, which drives the meter. And the gain of this circuit is set by this potentiometer here. So. You can see here a capacitor and a full bridge rectifier to take the output from the op-amp and convert it to something that the meter can use. So first this capacitor takes all the DC out, so it's now AC, and then that gets turned back into DC by this full bridge rectifier. I know that sounds completely stupid, but this time it's a DC that the meter can use. If I connect the meter directly to the op-amp's output, it would just constantly be pegged even when there's no input. Now, I've used germanium diodes for the rectifier because I don't want too much of a voltage drop, and germanium diodes have much less of a voltage drop than silicon diodes do. Also the reason why I'm going for a full bridge rectifier is because some waveforms are not symmetrical. Like, if you take a sine wave, you can see that it's pretty symmetrical, the positive half goes up as much as the negative half goes down. The same goes for things like square waves and sawtooth waves to some extent. If you take something like the sound of say a piano or a violin or something, the waveforms are not symmetrical. Worst still is if I've got some kind of waveform that's got say more negative than it's got positive and I'm only rectifying the positive half of that waveform. That's going to be really, really inaccurate. So you can see here why rectifying both halves into DC is a much better idea. Finally, I want to mention the biasing resistors, as this is powered off a single rail supply. The final design is not going to have these. It's going to be connected up to something that already has a 6 volt offset, so that's going to provide the bias for these. But for the tests that I'm doing in this video, I'm going to need those because what it's connected up to doesn't do that. Anyway, that's enough theory. My battery's almost dead, so yeah, let's get on and do something. So the chips I've decided to use for this project are the LM358 and the NE5534. So the reason why I'm using these two chips, well, this one is a dual op amp, so that's going to do this part of the circuit. And the LM358 is going to be this op amp. So many times I've built up a circuit and it hasn't worked. I've gone over the circuit, trying to see what's gone wrong, trying to see what I've done wrong. Nothing seems to be wrong and uh, yeah, turns out that the chip was bad. To prevent that from happening again, I'm going to check that both chips are okay. So in this setup, I've got a potentiometer connected to the positive and negative rails, so I can feed a variable voltage into the non-inverting input of the chip. I've got the output connected to the non-inverting input, so the chip is set up as a buffer, so whatever voltage goes into the chip should also come out. And I'm running this on about 9 volts. So we should have half the supply voltage, and we do I'm now going to twiddle this potentiometer, see what happens. The voltage should go up when I do this, and indeed it does. The voltage should go down when I turn it the other way. 
And indeed it does. Let's put that back to its halfway point. If you're wondering how the meter's connected up, well, this clip is connected to the ground, and uh, yeah, this clip is connected to the chip's output. Let's see what's going into the chip. We should have about the same, and yes, we do. Exactly the same. So, this chip is good. Okay, gone and tested the other chip as well. That's working good. I've pulled all the wires off, so we've now got just the two chips. And I think it's about time to build a circuit. Okay, so I have the LM324 chip wired up. As you can see, we've got the biasing resistors to bias the input of this chip at half of the supply voltage. And as for the outputs, output A is going through this resistor, and output B is going through this resistor, and they both meet there. And this chip isn't doing anything at the moment. All that's connected to it is these two resistors. So, let's measure some voltages. Let's turn this on. Hope nothing blows up. Okay, nothing's blown up or let out the magic smoke, which is good. So, let's measure our voltage going into this resistor divider network. Okay, we've got 9.2 there. 9.2 there. We should have 9.2 volts supplying the chip. Right, let's check out what's coming out of these two resistors. We should have, okay, 4.6 volts. That's good. Let's check the other one. 4.59, that's close enough. Let's see what's coming out of the chips. Let's check output A. Good. It's halfway, that's just where we want it. And output B. Good. Very good. Okay, this is Radio TV Format. And uh, what we have here is, um, something. Okay, so doing some tests on the circuit so far. I've now added the two input capacitors. And on the scope here, I'm measuring input A which is the blue waveform, and the output where the two resistors combine, which is the yellow waveform. I can switch this over to channel B, so we can see what's going into there. It's about the same. Because I'm sending the same waveform into both channels. As you can see, the voltages are about the same. Now I'm going to disconnect one of the inputs, and you should see the output go to about half. And, as you can see, it does. So, now I'm going to wire this second chip up as an audio amplifier. Right, well, I've got the second chip wired up, so it should amplify what is coming in from these two resistors. Well, I say it should amplify, but if I turn this potentiometer up, which should increase the gain, it just goes completely dead. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Should have a ton of gain right now, and as you can see, we're getting nothing. I'm going to check my schematic here, and... Oh, you know what? I think I've just figured out what's wrong. I forgot to put the capacitor between this resistor and the ground. So it's just amplifying the DC, and we want it to amplify the just the fluctuations in that DC, can't believe I've been so stupid. Yep, even the best of us make mistakes sometimes. Alright, at least it's going to be easy to connect a capacitor there. Let's have a look, see what capacitors I've got. This is a... It's a 10 microfarad, that might not be enough. It's this one. Okay, that's a 100 microfarad. Okay, that will do. So I'll take out that wire there. So now there's nothing between this resistor and the ground. Put that capacitor in there, and let's see what we get. We can get that in there, of course. Now, there we go, there's our gain. Now that's working like it should. Right, let's see how far I can turn this up 
before it starts to clip. We're not at clipping yet. Oh, well, we're all the way up, and it's still very clean. Well, if it skews the fact that it's jiggling up and down like that. So much interference in this room, that's the trouble. I don't know if that's interference with my power supply, quite what that is, actually. So, that's working. Ah, oh, we were having some lovely rain earlier. Look how wet it is. Now the stupid gay homo sun has come out and ruined everything. Other than the mess of wires, we have ourselves a metering circuit. Well, hopefully anyway. You can see I've added the full bridge rectifier. I'm a little bit concerned as to whether this is actually going to work very well because, you know, when the voltages get low, it might not even get through the diodes, but we'll see. All right, turn the power on. Probably should have turned the gain down before I turned this on, but anyway, I'm going to play a tone into this thing and see what the meter does. All right, well, we've got full deflection there, so let me just adjust the gain. That seems to be working as it should. Now, I'm going to disconnect one of the audio channels, which should take it down to half of its volume. And this needle should go down to negative six. If this is all working properly, of course. And no, it doesn't. It goes down almost all the way. Try disconnecting the other input. And yeah, we get the same results. I'm going to have a bit of a rethink about this, because this is not working how I thought it would. Okay, so that didn't work too well. I think the problem is the signal's just trying to go through too many diodes and we've got a rather nasty dead zone there because when the amplitude of the signal gets too low, it's just not going to get through. So I think maybe a different kind of rectifier with less diodes is in order. So this is what I've come up with. So in this rectifier there are only two diodes and two resistors. It's still full wave rectification. When the audio signal is positive, it goes through this diode, then through the meter, then through this resistor and into ground. And when the audio signal's negative, it's the other way around. Comes up here, goes through this resistor, then through the meter, then through this diode. So, of course I don't know how well this will work, but we'll see. Right, so I've built up the circuit again. So we now have this rectifier in there. So now the signal only has to go through one diode depending on whether it's the positive or negative half. Anyway, I'm going to play the tone and let's see what we get. Right, yeah. As expected, I am going to need to turn this up just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect one of the inputs. And if this goes to negative 6 decibels, we'll know the circuit's working properly, because it'll be getting half of the amplitude that it was getting with both channels connected. And no, it goes down to about negative 8. Well, it's better. It's, uh, it's definitely better than it was. Now, if I could just think of some way of getting those lows up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so this is level meter circuit mark three. So this time I've put a couple of diodes in the feedback network of the final op amp. And what that's going to do is it's going to provide a corrected waveform to get over the dead zone of the two diodes. Well, in theory it should, because all four of these diodes are the same. So let me try to explain that with a few illustrations. So the problem is that Let's say this is our audio waveform going positive and going negative and going positive and going negative and going positive. Trouble is, if you try to rectify that with, say, a full bridge rectifier or whatever, it's only going to rectify a small portion of the wave. So everything above this line here and everything below that line there, that's all that's going to get rectified. And everything that's in the middle there is just going to get ignored and it's not going to go through. 
We've got pretty much a 200 millivolt and negative 200 millivolt dead zone here. So, what I think is adding a couple of diodes into the feedback network of the final op amp, like you saw in the previous schematic, that's going to correct the waveform. So, again, we've got this same audio waveform going in. But here, as you can see, it goes straight up, then we've got the curve, then jumps down, then we've got the curve, then jumps up again, we've got the curve, and jumps down again, and we've got the curve. So it fills in that 200 millivolt dead zone. And we got a nice rectified waveform. This is how I used to do it. Diode here and a diode here, but yeah, that's completely inaccurate, so that's why I've scrapped that idea. Right, so we've got the two diodes in the feedback now. So I'm going to start the tone playing. Now let's see what this thing does. It still probably won't work, knowing my luck, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I have to turn the op amps out down just a little bit. But okay, I'm going to disconnect one of the inputs, so there'll be half as much signal going through. Will it go down to negative six? Here's hoping. Oh yes, look at that. Negative six. Right where it should be. Let's try that with the other input. I'll just disconnect this capacitor because that would be easier to do it that way. And yep. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, so this is my final design. I've taken everything that works, put it all together, and this is what I've come up with. Now, like I say, it might work with silicon diodes. I haven't tested that yet, but I'm pretty sure it would. Also, if you're wondering about what's in these boxes here, those are just the additional components to bias this if you want to build this yourself and use it in your own audio project. Yeah, I'd better um, say what all these components are because it was very cramped in there, didn't have enough space to write in the component values, and it's just ended up being an indecipherable squiggle, so 12 volt supply, 47 kilo ohm resistor, 10 microfarad capacitor, 47 kilo ohm resistor, ground, and again that's the same thing here, 12 volt supply, 47 kilo ohm resistor, 10 microfarad capacitor, 47 kilo ohm resistor, and ground. Of course, my final design isn't going to have those because, like I said, what this is going to be connected to is already going to have that bias voltage offset, so it's not needed. But, yep, I think it's about time I put this onto a board. Okay, so we, I mean, I, I don't know why I keep saying we, when it's just one of me here. Although, I don't know, I could have cloned myself. I could be the clone. Anyway. I have now transferred the level meter circuit onto a board. And you might have noticed something. Yep, when I'm speaking, this meter's going up because off camera, I have a microphone, which I've just picked up. And I'm now speaking into the microphone, which is going through a little preamp and then into this. As you can see, that seems to be working pretty well. Taking the meter while I put the microphone down again. Yeah, I think we've got enough space. I mean, I have got enough space for the uh, mixer circuit. Anyway, I think that's just about it for now, so until next time, goodbye.